All right, this is 8.2. We are now looking at oblique triangles and using the cosine law. Remember what an oblique triangle is? Basically, it's just a non-right angle triangle. Okay, so anything we don't have a right angle. So the cosine law says its sides and angles are related in this way. Now, it's a lot of theory to get these equations. You know, there's, you know, we can do case studies and we can sub in values and eventually it all boils down to this. Now, if you think the formula is complicated, you can imagine the theory that went into to solving for the formula, right? Like the, usually the formula is a lot simpler than the actual theory to get there, right? Like E equals MC squared. You can imagine all of Einstein's formulas before he came up with that ni nice nifty compact formula. So same thing here. It's in, in completely in reduced terms. This is the best they could do. So I'm not going to go through the entire explanation of how these formulas were derived, but you will need to know them. You need to memorize these formulas. Now you can see that there's a pattern here, right? When you're solving for A, the two variables inside the formula are B and C, B and C, and the angle relates to the side A. So the angle A is with the side length A on the ends, and then the other variables are in the same. So when we're solving for B, the angle is B, and then the other variables inside are A and C, okay? Now, it doesn't matter if you mess this up, B squared plus C squared, or you put C squared plus B squared, because they're addition, it wouldn't matter, but it does matter that you're using B and C when you're solving for A, A and C solving for B, A and B when you're solving for C, and the angle goes with the side line, okay? That's the pattern, okay? Looks long, looks complicated. I can't make it any easier. You got to remember that. So it's like, it's like your quadratic equation there. It's big and it's long, but it is what it is. You got to memorize it. To use the cosine law to solve triangles, you must know either. These are the scenarios now we're looking for. Lengths of two sides and one contained angle. So SAS. Mm -hmm. So when we have two sides and squished in between the two sides, we have an angle. Now the reason why that wouldn't work with the sine law is because it doesn't give us a full ratio for any of the vertices. Do you guys understand that? Like I don't have an angle with the opposite side. I have my two sides and my angle squished between them. I can't get that ratio. So you gotta use cosine law. Okay. No. Like like put it here? Yeah. No. Because you the information it gives you won't allow you to solve for everything unless you know these laws. Okay, that's the short of the explanation, but you can't. Okay, like you might have to solve for C, and if you put a, or you might have to solve for uh, B, if you put a line here, it's not gonna help you. Um, anyways, sign law is super easy. Like, let's be honest, it's probably easier than, than Sokotoa. There's nothing to decide. What? Cosine law is harder than sine law. Sine law we just covered, right? Sine law was super easy, right? It was just one ratio, right? You didn't have to make any decisions. You just saw like whatever two values were given, that was the ratio and you solved. This one is a little harder and I don't think it's that hard, but I mean the formula is longer, right? So these are the two scenarios. One, you're either given side angle side or you don't have any angles. You just have all three sides. Side, side, side or side angle side. Those are the ones where you're like, shit. It's cosine law, okay? If you have any other ones where you have the angle on the opposite side, you can use sine law, all right? Okay, so once you put the given information in the cosine law, you isolate the missing and, and side and solve for the angle, that's it, okay? When finding a missing angle, you must use cos negative one on your calculator. We know this already with sine, it's the same thing with cosine. You have a button right over the cosine with sine, cos negative one. Okay, to solve a triangle means to find all missing side lengths and angles. We know that as well. Let's look at the first one. The information that we're given is side, angle, side. Let's talk about why we cannot use sine law. If we can use sine law, it's much easier. We're always going to use it. We can't use sine law because we don't have a full ratio. We don't have a side with the opposite angle. We don't have that. Okay, we have... Uh, the side length A, but we don't have the angle A. We have the side length, or the angle B, but we don't have the side length B. So we have to use cosine law. Side, angle, side. Now, just like we did with sine law, we're going to put the variable we're looking for, in this case, B, it's going to be opposite all the information that we have, 
into our formula, which is up here. Okay, so we put b squared equals the other two side length squared, four squared plus seven squared, minus two times the two side lengths, a and, uh, sorry, c and a, right? A, c, cos, because it's the cosine law, not sine, cos, the angle that of the, of the opposite of the side that we're looking for. So in this case, 56, okay? Now it is easier to solve for the side length with cosine law, because our formula is set up for the side length, right? But you can also solve for the angle. We're gonna see that as well in some examples. If we know the sides, all three sides, but we don't know the angle, okay? So here, we do a little bit of math. All of this is pretty straightforward. You can all be punched directly into your calculator. Your calculator will do bed mass here. You can put four squared plus seven squared. Everyone try this right now. Four squared plus seven squared minus two times four times seven times cos 56. Everybody write that. You should get 33.68. Now remember, that's B squared. So you need to take the square root. The answer is plus or minus. We don't deal with negatives in, in negative lengths, so we know we only deal with the positive. B is equal to 5.8. Any questions? Everybody get that? Yes, sir. Yeah. All straight in one, right? So it's pretty easy. Next one. Here, what are we given? Again, side, angle, side. We're going to use our formula, cosine law. We're solving for uh, little q here. Okay. Q squared, or PR if you want to say PR is equal to, subbing in all the values. 5.8 again, wow, that's a coincidence. Hmm. Sure, we can do that, we can just square root the whole equation. If you do this on your calculator, you have to put in brackets like this. Oh. Square root, bracket, put in everything else, and you can't forget that last bracket. Okay? You can do that. Or you can get this answer, right, 33.68, and then press square root and the answer key. That will give you this, if you don't want to type it out. Okay, next one. This time, we're given three sides, so now we have to figure out the angle. We can't use sine law because we don't have any completed ratios. We have to use cosine law. So, cosine law here. We're going to plug all our known values here. And we're going to measure for the indicated angle. So it wants H. So we have to use cosine law, which lines up with H. So you're going to say H squared, which is 5, right? 5 squared is equal to the other two values squared. 5 and a half plus 4 squared minus 2 times the other two values times 4, all times cos H. Now this is harder to get the angle. But pay attention here what you need to do. You're going to deal with all the numbers that are loose first, right? So this 5 squared is 25. You're going to then subtract these two values, 5 and a half squared and 4, because they're going to come over to the other side, right? Right? So 25 minus 30.25 minus 16. And you're going to end up with negative 21.25 is equal to 44 cos h. That's what you end up with. This. Now you need to get cos by its, or you need to get h by itself. So the first step is getting rid of the 44. So you divide both things by negative 44. You'll end up here with cos h. Now I just switched sides, but cos h is equal to 21.25 divided by 44. They were both negative, so I just canceled them and made them both positive. Angle h now is equal to the negative, the inverse cos of that ratio. H is 61. Try that on your calculator. Cos negative, put in a bracket, 21.25 divided by 44, close the bracket. Make sure you get 61. Who does not have a calculator? Everyone has a calculator, thank God. Doesn't have cos or sine? What? Let me see. Hey, David, you need, a, you need a calculator, right? How are you going to write the test? You got to get one this weekend, okay? They're called scientific calculators, okay? You need it. 
Unless you're going to draw a massive unit circle, try to figure out the sign ratio. It's going to take a long time. Sorry? At the dollar store? Yeah, 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 they are. 100%. Okay. Next one. Look what we're given. Again, side, side, side. It asks us for angle B. So we're going to line up the equation with starting with B squared, opposite that angle of interest. So we put B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cos B. That's our formula. We just plug in all of our, our, all of our values. Okay. Actually, what we've done here is before we added numbers, we rearranged for the angle. Okay, so this is the same as the first one. We just rearranged to have the formula for the angle. It's A squared plus C squared minus B squared all over 2AC. Two two so you could do it this way. You could memorize this formula as well for angles, but I usually just memorize the first one and then just work with the math. But you could do it that way. Now remember, B is going to be associated with the negative, like negative that variable that, is, that goes with that angle. And then you, you do all this calculation and you take the cos inverse, you get 47. Should be able to do all of this on your calculator. Now this is a little tricky when we have division here. If you wanted to do this in one step, you would have to do bracket, bracket, and then your divide sign, and then bracket, bracket over that. If you just said minus 22 divided by two, times 18, it's going to mess up. You have to use brackets. All right. Three, solve the triangles. So we need to solve all of the angles and all of the sides. F, K, and C. We have side, angle, side. So we know we're going to be solving for the side length K using our cosine formula. Here it is. K squared is equal to this. These are all subbed in values from the triangle that we already know. And right away, we just say K is equal to 29.1. You can do that all in one step on your calculator. Okay. Once we have uh, side K, we then have a ratio here. Okay, so look, notice how we switch to sine law. Because we already have a ratio. We have a full ratio. So we don't want to go through cosine law again to solve the other stuff. So we can just use the sine law to get angle C. Okay, we put the angle on top, sine C, over 26, which we have over the ratio that we've established with K, 29.1, and we solve for angle C is 46. You don't have to do the sine law once you do it once. You've given yourself enough information at that triangle, start using the sine law. Does that make sense? You guys understand what I'm saying? Okay. Finally, step three, we don't have to use either law to get the third angle because we know all three angles in a triangle add up to 180. We just subtract those two values. All right, one page left. Or two pages. No, one page. All right. Okay, triangle ABC with A equals 8, C equals 6, and angle B equals 35. So here... We know again, unfortunately, we have to use cosine law because it's side, angle, side. We don't have a full ratio of the angle with the opposite side length. So we have to use, oh, actually, I don't know why this is known that all angles are 35. No, that doesn't make sense. No, I thought that they were equating this angle to this angle. They look similar, but there's no way. This triangle, I think, is drawn wrong. Yeah, these angles are greater than 35. They have to be. That's 35. Okay, so we know this is our triangle, right? I'll, I'll redraw it over here because it's a little bit cut off. We know that we have A, B, C, and we don't know B, but we know C and A, and we know this is 35. Okay, so we have to use our cosine law. We're going to set it up to solve for B right away. So we say B squared is equal to the other two sides squared minus 2, the other two sides, AC, cos, 35. And we get B is 4.6. All right? Now we want to get angle A. 
we're going to switch to the sine law because we have our ratio, right? We have our ratio of B now, sine B over B, which is sine 35 over 4.6. And we can just solve for angle A by using sine law. So sine A is equal to 8 times sine 35 over 4.6. A is equal to 86. Okay, this is clearly not an 86 degree angle, so that triangle is clearly wrong. Step three, we're going to solve for angle C, and again, we're just going to take 180 and minus the two other sides, 59. Any questions with that one? Next one, we have PQR. We have all three sides. This is arguably the worst scenario because we're in cosine law and we're solving for the angle here, P on the end. Okay, so you can rearrange it with the formula and get this, cos P is equal to Q squared plus R squared minus P squared all over 2QR. Or just remember this, right? Remember that first one and rearrange it once you've subbed in values. Okay, if we do sub in those values here, we get angle P is equal to uh, 100. This dot means approximately, so it's been rounded. Okay, once we have angle P, we can switch over to sine law because we have the ratio for P, 100 over 11. So we use that 100 over 11 to solve for any other unknowns. In this case, we're solving for the angle Q. We get Q is 54. And then we can solve for angle R just by subtracting 180 from the two other angles, we get 26. Any questions? Pretty easy, easy. All right, word problem. Calvin is on a hiking trip. On the first section of the hike, I'm gonna read the whole problem this time so we don't mess it up. He walks five kilometers from the Loon campsite to the owl. owl campsite, thanks. Then he turns and hikes seven kilometers to the eagle campsite, making a 68 degree angle from the first section of the hike. So let's, let's map out this, see if we've gotten this uh, diagram correct here. Um, this is L, okay. The first section of the hike, he walks five kilometers from L to the owl campsite. So this from here to here, he's walking across the ground, here, east. Then he turns and hikes seven kilometers, seven, to the eagle campsite up here, making a 68 degree angle from the first section of the hike. So it's important here that it says he turns, right? Because this 68 degree angle, you might argue that it goes this way, but it says from his like original direction, so he's turning, so it's 68, he's going back, right? He then returns on the trail to the loon campsite, so then he comes back. What is the distance from the eagle campsite to the loon campsite to the nearest kilometer? So it's asking for uh, eagle to loon, sorry. Eagle to loon. He then return, uh, what's the distance? So we're looking for this, W cross here. Now we can't use sine law because we don't have a ratio completed, but we can use cosine law, side, angle, side. Okay, so that's cosine law here. So we can solve for W all in one formula here. W is equal to square root of 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2AC over cos 68. We can get W right away. Okay, now that we have W, we can use sine law to solve for anything else. Okay, what does it ask? At what angles are the three campsites situated with respect to each other? So it's asking for the other two angles. So we can use sine law. We'll use sine E. We're going we're gonna to equate it to the side we know, which is W, sine 68 over W. So there's our, our equation. We solve for E by doing the sine inverse of this. We get E is 42, and then we do 180 minus 42 and minus 68, and we get the final value for angle L. Okay, which is 70. Okay, any questions on that one? Done. Your homework for 8.2 is here. Your homework for 8.1 is here. Okay, that's it.